Hi, and welcome to a quick one on thermohaline circulation. Uh, in this image here, you see ocean circulation in general and what we call the global conveyor belts moving around the planet. This comes from NASA. And a quick note, you can get all their stuff, uh, visualizations like this, if you go to NASA's visualization website, just Google that. Um, what you see here on this global conveyor belt is how water circulates around the planet. There's a lot of drivers to this. The Coriolis effect is a big player. That's uh, the rotation of the Earth and how it spins, how water and gases spin uh, along the sphere. But really with the thermohaline circulation aspect of this, we're really looking at thermal, which is temperature, and haline, which is salt. Both of those are really dependent on density. So if you have uh, cold water, versus warm water, the warm water will float and the cold water will fall through it. And if you talk about haline, the salts, the same thing, if you have very salty solutions that will fall through fresh water. And so if you think about mixing those two together as you near the equators, for example, you have a lot of uh, evaporation, which actually results in saltier water. That's gonna change how that water floats or sinks. As you move near the poles, here's Greenland, where you have the largest waterfall in the entire world. Uh, as fresh water moves along, becomes salty, and is extremely cold, and sinks very quickly up near Greenland, and adds to this whole system. Um, here's a couple uh, notes just to summarize some of that information here. And something to actually consider uh, would be a couple of questions I've listed here for you to think about to search out that deal with uh, the thermal thermohaline circulation as well as just, uh, ocean circulation if you look at the Gulf Stream um, it's much warmer along the east coast of the US than it is in uh, in Europe where that stream curves across and drops down into England and France and why is it warmer also another thing to consider would be the Humboldt currents and the Atacama Desert uh, how that actually how those play a role with affecting the climate as well. That's a whole nother dynamic we can look at, all thanks to the ocean circulation. I'll spend a lot more time on this in future classes, but I hope that covers thermohaline circulation briefly. Thanks, talk to you later.